Hi ladies, Angela here. Today I'd love to talk to you about some genetic predispositions to weight gain for women as they move towards and into perimenopause, menopause and beyond. This is a super common symptom for women as they move into their 40s and sometimes they're wondering what's going on. I haven't done anything different yet I'm gaining weight, especially around the midline. This is super common. Women notice the waistline expanding and the hips staying relatively the same and they're wondering why. What is going on? Okay, now I need to exercise harder. I need to reduce calories. I need to really watch what I'm eating. Um, and then I'll get results. That's what I used to do in my 20s or 30s. Work then, should work now. Many women are just dumbfounded with why that does not work in your 40s or your 50s. So one of the main reasons, hormones. Hormones, when they are changing and shifting, so estrogen and progesterone are both dropping. If this was estrogen and this is progesterone's dropping faster than estrogen. So we are left in our 40s and 50s with a hormone imbalance and that hormone imbalance is with estrogen dominance. Even though both hormones are lowering, estrogen's higher in that lowering process than progesterone until well into menopause, believe it or not. So what are estrogen dominant symptoms? One of them is definitely weight gain. So what can we do to help this and understand this more? And why are we gaining weight, me as a person, and maybe my friend, but my other friend is exactly the same. No matter you know what they do with their diet and lifestyle, their waistline staying the same as they move towards and into menopause. Many women are very frustrated by this, especially if they're working hard to improve and maintain their weight. So what's the explanation? There's many, but one of them can be genetics. And what I mean by this is what are your genes specifically in your body? What were you born with? And what are you expressing with your genetics that may make you more prone to weight gain as you move towards and into menopause and beyond? And some women have what I call some potentially unfortunate genetics in that they will gain weight more quickly and more easily and will have a harder time taking it off, especially if that gene is being expressed through lifestyle. We can test for this. We can understand if you may have some of these genetic predispositions to an increased risk for weight gain and poor metabolic health as you move towards and into menopause and beyond. And again, this is a time of life where the risk factors for poor metabolic health go up as the hormones go down, especially estrogen and progesterone. And they're both definitely on the decline, but they're on a decline at an uneven rate. And it creates that estrogen dominant effect. So who's more vulnerable to this estrogen dominance? It's women that have the expression of certain genetics. And so again, how do we understand this? We've got to run the testing first, but what can be done for most women? Most women, we need to zone in on the areas that are gonna help improve your metabolic health. So for a lot of women, it's actually, really dialing in your nutrient status. It's not reducing calories. It's not exercising harder. It's understanding that there's the quality of the, the, the food that you're bringing in um, and the amount, meaning you certainly don't wanna be overeating, but you don't necessarily need to go into calorie restriction to get the weight loss. And again, for some women, a lot of women, I know this actually backfires. So we can understand how to optimize nutrients that are needed in higher amounts often depending on your genetic predispositions to help you optimize hormone health and balance in this time of life to help you optimize weight. So it, they, it all works together. For example, some women need a higher intake of B vitamins, B12, B9, for example. Some need higher amounts of B6 coming in. So we can look at the foods that help with this. And then we can also look, do you potentially need some help with a vitamin support as well? Some women will, some women won't. Depends on how dialed in their nutrition is, how well they're absorbing that nutrient from the food, how their gut, gut health is, how well you're digesting. So there's a few factors there. It's not just direct with the nutrient, but again, some women need higher amounts of B vitamins to metabolize that excess estrogen, that estrogen dominance that we have, depending on your genetics. Some women need higher amounts of magnesium coming in. And in combination with the magnesium, some women need higher amounts of cardiovascular exercise to move that estrogen and to move that weight dial but not everyone does. Some women will do better with resistance training than cardio. So there is, again, some genetic predispositions that can lean you more one way or the other. Um, you know, everyone thinks because they look on Google and the research is saying, just weight train, don't do as much cardio as you move towards and into menopause, um, that every female needs to do that. And it's not actually the case. We need to be specific and customized with each person and your genetic predispositions can help you understand that. 
some women need a higher amount of antioxidants coming in. So what are antioxidants? Most of the antioxidants we need are contained in our colorful fruits and vegetables. But again, some of us need higher amounts than others to actually help us eat up some of the non-favorable estrogens that when they are not moved out of the body properly, if we don't have enough antioxidants coming in, they recirculate and they cause more estrogen dominance, they cause more weight gain. So some women, we all need fruits and vegetables, but some women need higher amounts of particular antioxidants depending on their genetic predisposition. So it gives you some just examples. Some women also need a considerably high, higher amount of fiber and phytoestrogens coming in to balance their estrogen and progesterone, especially in that perimenopause, menopause shift. Hormones are lowering, but if this is progesterone, this is estrogen, they're lowering at an uneven rate. So we need to make sure that we can keep that estrogen balanced with the progesterone as much as possible. And again, some women have genetics where they need more fiber coming in to make that happen. So I hope that helps you to understand some of the connections. I will also be hosting very soon a, a course, a little workshop, a webinar. It's going to be one hour and it's going to go specifically through genetic panels to help you understand what you could do to optimize your genetics, to optimize your hormone balance and your weight balance as you move towards and into menopause. It's really dialed in um, to help you get specific with your health and your individual needs. And I can't wait to share that with you. So I will be advertising that. If you're not in my Facebook group already, Functional Medicine for Hormone Imbalances, make sure you join uh, because that's where I will be hosting it and I will be giving you some information as to when that's coming. I also will be posting more videos in YouTube to let you know about it as well. If you are on my YouTube channel, thank you so much for being here. So stay tuned. But I hope this gives you some insight and ideas as to if you are gaining weight, you feel like no matter what you do, it doesn't work to help you maintain, improve, and just keep that weight status where you want it to be both now and for years to come. I'm going to have some answers for you in this workshop, and I hope this is giving you some information. I'm also very happy to speak with you one-on-one -on -one if you think you may want to work together to help optimize your hormone health and your weight as you move towards and into menopause and beyond. I am not only a healthcare practitioner, I have been in the field of women's health for many years, uh, over 20 now. Um, I'm also a functional medicine practitioner, and I really look to get to the root cause of women's hormone imbalance symptoms and help you develop a strategy with lifestyle both now and for the long term to get you feeling like your best self again so if you think that might be you feel free to reach out to me you can go to my website www.angelasimpsonfunctionalmedicine.ca and there is a place there for you to either connect with me through the contact link or you can also book a free complimentary consult to talk to me all right thanks ladies take care see you again soon mm -hmm.